One thing that I find really unfortunate is nobody really takes the time to research what could be in their home state or province. I come from the state of Michigan, USA, and there's no shortage of natural anomalies here that you know you can't find anywhere else in the world. You know, it's it's a massive place to take in, and it's one of only 50 in the U.S. You know, this can be applied anywhere in the world, any country, any state, province. There will always be places local to where you live, and as disinterested in you know your home as you might be, you could realize that there's a lot to find out there. You know, just in your backyard. I set out with uh, two friends, fantastic photographers, Michael and Deanna. They're uh, very talented at what they do. So we opted to visit the sand dunes in the west part of the state. And as fortune would have it, we were hit with vehicular problems less than an hour down the road. <laughs> we had a transmission overheat. This is what happens when your car wants to mess up on a road trip. We did a little impromptu photo shoot, naturally, and after giving the transmission some time to cool off in a Meyer parking lot, we were back on the road. One thing that was kind of tough to capture, mostly due to the lack of lighting was how long this road was. We were on it for a solid 40 minutes and normally it should be like a 30 minute drive but it was so unkempt and littered with potholes and you know, traversing it was a challenge and it was quite an experience that late at night you know pitch dark you don't know if you're being trailed by murderers. The music makes it seem nice and sweet but you know there in the silence <laughs> It was something else. Another thing that was tough to capture from this that was absolutely incredible was the stars above. You know, you had zero light pollution for miles and you could see how it felt like the entire universe. It was really amazing. And there's just such a sweet alpine smell in the air, the freshest air I've breathed in my entire life, I'd like to say, because you just had acre upon acre of untapped wildlife and trees and grass and everything. It was fantastic, really. This is oddly cinematic, I like it. Mm, strapped up. Okay, so we're right where those restrooms and stuff are. Guys, the silence is insane. Let's scout. About 30 that way. Alright. How are you holding that? What, the pillow? No, the, your camera. I have no idea. Oh, light. Walk back over. Drop this bag here for placer and uh, No you're not. We're not splitting up. No, don't do that. Hey, 
If you couldn't tell by now, we're not established hikers by any means. I mean, Michael's rocking clown pants, Deanna had a little romper on, I had skinny jeans with no belt sagging off my ass because I was carrying stuff, Roshi's on my feet. Yeah, it, I guess there was just an expectation curve. We were envisioning pulling up on a sand dune and pitching a tent right next to the car. Yeah, that didn't happen. We made it, tent and one intact. Can you believe like everything worked out? Not really. Like, I think the most like scared I was was like the car, but I think it was just because it was so hot. Yeah. To be honest, the most afraid I was, like, my my like most fearful moment came when we got here, and it was like freaking like. After dark. that, we crawled yeah. into our sleeping bags, and it's about two in the morning, I'd say. We were kept awake for hours by rustling and rambling raccoons. I swear one poked its little nose into the tent and hit my foot. Swear to God. Every sound just startled the shit out of us. We'd never gone camping in the deep woods before. I think Deanna might have in the past, but me, hell no. Like, it's always been the family friendly. Everybody has an RV on a lot. There's roads and golf carts everywhere. And it wasn't for lack of wanting to. I'd always wanted to go camping, like get the most authentic experience I could, the furthest away from civilization and other campers. And I definitely got it that night. We made it, made it through the night. Somehow we traversed all of this in the pitch dark and we kept awake by f***ing raccoons. How are them coons, Mike? Coons are annoying. <laughs> That's a mighty noise. Did you feel violated because it touched your foot? No, it was nice. To be honest, when you said them coons touched your foot, I was like, you baby chunk. I mean, I watched it through the tent, I saw like something like this, and I was like, and it went where it was Yeah. I'm just curious, guys, if we had to come back and start a rain on you, first priority, Meyer, second priority, Zoom, mm -hmm. third priority, uh, if you're out in the game before. Huh? Another thing we were expecting was the rain. Yeah, we knew that was forecasted, but we were expecting it to be a little cold, thankfully. Well, for my sake anyway, it was really hot, muggy, and humid. Um, I was delighted for that, because if you know me, you know I despise any form of cold weather. Um, but it didn't make for some discomfort, because you kind of had to gauge whether or not you were dressing to stay dry or dressing to stay cool. So we have to make it there. The Grand Detour. At this point, the only trail to the dunes that we knew of was completely blocked off by the submerged lowland, and a shortcut there too was submerged, you could so, see. That's where I stepped in the big puddle, which really sucks. I hate having wet socks. Again, Roshi's not a good decision for something like this, but I did not know what I was getting myself into. I'm hoping that there's sand on the other side. And after that last hill there, say three miles later, since we'd left the camp gone the wrong way, had to go back around, finally, we saw sand. Whoa. 
Is that Saint? Yeah. Holy shit. It's been a few days and I've kind of had the chance to digest what we got to see. I'd, I'd really say that the dunes at Nordhaus are definitely one of the most incredible places I've been to yet. You know, and I, I'm not that well traveled. I haven't left the Western Hemisphere, but so far it's definitely something. And that really brings me back to my main point is this, which was impossible to capture even on a 4K camera, is in my home state, just three hours away from where I live. That's just incredible to me, to think that such beauty is in the places that aren't, you know, your typical mainstream attractions. It just really, it just really brings to light how fantastic the world is. And there's just so much out there that you, you couldn't, even if you were given a thousand lifetimes, you wouldn't even come close to experiencing all of it. But it, it was an absolute pleasure, and though we weren't prepared, um, it was still an experience I wouldn't change for anything.